Hey guys, I'm Jacob. I'm from Truckee, California. And if you already follow the channel, you know most of my focus is on running, photography, and filmmaking. But I got this One Wheel Pint X about six weeks ago, and it's just insanely fun. So I wanted to make a video talking a little bit about things I love about it, things I'm not so crazy about. And then in the second half of the video, I want to just dive into some tips and tricks if you're considering buying one or maybe you just got one and you're kind of nervous to get on it. I wanted to just kind of give you my learning progression and things that I've learned in the first six weeks and about 250 miles. So if you're just interested in the tips, go ahead and fast forward to the second half of this video and uh, you'll find that stuff. But first things first, I just want to talk about some of my favorite things about this and, uh, and some things that I'm maybe not quite as crazy about. So thing number one is this thing's just insanely fun. As I mentioned before, I basically replaced all of my kind of local driving in the Subaru with just riding this one wheel around because it turns an average little grocery shopping trip or uh, you know a jaunt to the co coffee shop into just this like awesome fun experience. So yeah, pro number two on this is the battery range. Uh, you're gonna get between 12 and 18 miles per charge on this thing, which is the really the main reason that I went with the Pint X over the Pint because the original Pint only got six to eight miles on the charge. And for me, that was kind of a deal breaker because I did want to use this for kind of a local commuter and not just kind of zipping around the block. So having that 12 to 18 mile range um, is huge for just kind of local commuting. Truckee's pretty small, so almost anywhere I want to get to on this thing, I can get there and back comfortably without worrying about running out of battery. Okay, pro number three is the app that it comes with. It's, uh, it's a pretty basic app, but it's a really cool way to kind of track your rides. You can see your top speed. You can see how long that previous ride was, and you can see live like how much battery you have left. So if you're worried about getting home or when to turn around, it'll give you that information. Um, and it also allows you to change mapping profiles. So Pacific X is kind of the one that comes standard on this thing, which is a little bit mellowed out and it's kind of a good learning profile. And then you have uh, Redwoods and Skyline. Skyline is a more punchy uh, profile. So if you're looking to just kind of get max performance out of it, uh, faster acceleration and things like that, try out the Skyline profile. Um, but I would definitely recommend starting out with the Pacific X mapping profile just to get used to things and it's just going to be a little bit mellow, more mellow for you. The fourth thing that I love about this one wheel is that it's so small and compact. Um, if I'm going on a road trip or something, I can throw it in the back of the car and it doesn't take up much space. But the other awesome part is instead of like riding an e-bike around where you have to go somewhere and lock it up outside, um, if I go grocery shopping, I can just carry this thing in by the mag handle here, throw it in a shopping cart, go on my way, and then it's ready to rip when I get back. Same thing for a coffee shop. Just walk inside, place your order, and you can set it right down at the table. So it's compact kind of form factor is a huge plus over some of the other electric personal vehicles that you can get. Okay, so let's get to the cons. There aren't too many things negative that I would have to say about this thing, um, but there are a few little nitpicky things that maybe could improve in the future. Um, the first thing is it doesn't come with the fender. Um, I don't do a ton of trail riding, so I don't necessarily get a bunch of dirt and water kind of thrown up on my legs, um, but it would be nice if it came with a fender. Um, so. That's one negative. The other thing, the second thing, is that the grip tape is awesome right out of the box, but as you wear on it and you get dirty shoes and things like that on it, it does start to um, lose its grip just a little bit. So, not a huge deal, but also not the most ideal setup. And the third and final thing that I would consider a con about the Pint X is that that price point of $1,400 is just a little bit um, of a stretch compared to that original Pint which went for I think 950 bucks. So 
that's a pretty big bump for a similar product but in my opinion like i said before having that extra battery range is well worth that extra price so those are my pros and cons about the one wheel pint x if you want to see uh, tips and tricks stick around and we'll get into that next okay guys so you made it this far this is going to be the tip section of the video uh, if you've joined us just now, welcome to the video. Um, I'm gonna give you five tips on things that I learned when I was figuring out how to ride my one wheel a few weeks ago. So hopefully it's gonna save you some uh, falls and just uh, shorten your learning curve a little bit. Tip number one is wear your helmet. Um, I can't stress enough how important it is to just protect your noggin. I uh, had some tumbles on this thing and scraped up my palms and my knees and stuff like that, but I'm super glad I was wearing my helmet when I was out riding because that would be bad news if I died on my one wheel. So don't die, wear a helmet. Uh, tip number two is practice bailing. So this is going to be super important. You might even try this uh, without your board just to figure this technique out. Um, a really important skill to have is in the beginning, you're going to feel really unstable, a little bit off balance when you're figuring out how to ride your one wheel. So learning how to bail off of it and uh, not crash is going to be important. So what I'd recommend is going flat footed and then jumping both feet at the same time onto safe ground so you don't crash. Uh, make sure you're just not pressing off one foot or the other when you jump because that's gonna throw everything out of whack, throw your balance off, and it's more likely you're gonna crash. So just practice it uh, on the ground with your shoes, and then uh, once you're on the board and riding, you can take it to there. Tip number three is to bring a friend along. So when I was learning, I had my girlfriend Kate help me out. Um, basically what you're gonna do is just have somebody there to kind of hold your hand, help you get up on the board and get to that point where the board starts to engage so that you can start rolling, get your balance, and then as you start to gain a little bit of speed, you're going to feel a lot smoother and feel a little bit more in control, but just having somebody there to kind of hold your hands and help you get that first couple of miles an hour uh, is gonna be super, super helpful. Tip number four is to just start out in a really big, wide open area. I started in a parking lot. I'd recommend uh, something with smooth asphalt, concrete. Uh, I've heard of people also starting on grass. That seems a little bit bumpier to me, but if you do have a tumble, it's gonna probably feel a lot better. So just find a big wide open space, maybe a football field or a parking lot. Um, Cause initially when you're learning how to turn, it's gonna take you a long time to get around that turn and you're gonna need to make big wide sweeping turns. So have lots of space, make sure you're not gonna run into any street signs or park cars or anything like that. Uh, Cause that'd be bad news. So just make sure you give yourself some space. Don't be afraid to uh, take up a full parking lot by yourself. And tip number five, the final tip, is uh, more about body positioning. So when I started out, I felt really uh, anxious, really stiff. My body was just kind of fighting every movement that the board wanted to make. Um, so first off, finding kind of the center point on your foot pads for your feet is gonna be really important. Just like if you got on a skateboard and your heels were hanging too far off or your toes were hanging off, it's gonna feel really awkward to turn. So just make sure your foot are nice, feet are nice and centered on the board. And then just keep your body loose, like stay in an athletic kind of attack position, but let your ankles and your knees and everything kind of bend loosely and move along with the board. Whenever you hit a crack or a bump or a root, uh, that's gonna be transferred up into your legs. And if you're stiff as a board, it might throw you off. So just stay loose, have fun with it. Um, it, you're probably going to crash a couple of times and that's natural, so just be prepared for that in the learning process. Don't let it scare you. Uh, just wipe it off and try again. So hopefully this was helpful for you guys. If uh, you have any questions, just drop them in the comments below and I will try to get to those and answer all of your questions. And if you like the video, hit the thumbs up. If you want to subscribe and see more stuff like this, hit the subscribe button and yeah. Stoked to see you guys in the next video. Peace out for now.